I told my best friend that her fiance was cheating on her and she did not believe me. Disclaimer, this is my story. When I was 20 years old, I moved to LA. I was trying to make friends as quickly as possible. Good friends, not backstabbers. At my new job, I met this girl and she was kind of similar to me, but she was the type of person that trusted everybody. Right away, she started trusting me. She was just really kind. I started hanging out outside of work and it was really nice because she liked to cook and so did I. She would come over to my place and we would make some food and just watch movies. After a couple of weeks, I met her fiance and I hated him right away. All he did was stare at me. What do you do when you meet your bestie's fiance and all he does is stare at you? <laughs> it's disgusting. At first I thought he was kind of joking, but then I realized he was being super serious. He was trying to make cute eyes at me. So after that, I would never look him straight in the eye. I knew that's what he wanted, so I just wouldn't do it. That's when I started being really vigilant. I started noticing every single little red flag about him. One day, my bestie invites me over to a barbecue at her place, and after a couple of hours, I wanted to leave. Everyone at this point had had so many drinks. I was the only person that was sober. I go into her bedroom, and I find her with her sister. Part two is up. I told my best friend that her fiance was cheating on her and she did not believe me. Disclaimer, this is my story time. I walk into their bedroom and I see her fiance with my best friend's sister. What I actually saw was just him kissing her neck. But why is your fiance kissing your sister's neck? And as soon as they saw me, they freaked. They jumped up really quick. He ran out of the bedroom and then he just stared at me. Like he always does, just staring. I ran to my bestie and I told her everything. By the way, everyone at this point had had so many drinks. I was actually the only sober person at this party. What happened next was a nightmare. My bestie turns to me and tells me to leave the party. She told me that I was just jealous of her relationship, that I was projecting on her. He throws my purse at me and I leave. I cried so much, I was mortified. She was so desperate to make her relationship work. Okay, by the way, her sister actually lived with them at the time. This girl had no money and no job. My best friend supported her in every single way possible. Her and I obviously didn't speak after that until six months later. She calls me on the phone in tears. Then she tells me she finds out her sister is pregnant. Her fiance is leaving her for her sister. And they are kicking her out of her apartment. The one she paid half for. I remember this because he actually followed me on Instagram two days ago. Did I be petty? Self-care sister out. If you're not using toilet paper for your makeup routine, you're missing out. Welcome to episode two of self-care sister tips. After you apply your foundation, take two sheets of toilet paper and gently pat it into the skin. Do not rub it, just tap it gently into the skin. This is gonna help you in two ways. It'll absorb excess oil, excess foundation. It's gonna give you a more natural finish. So if you're a no makeup makeup girl, you're gonna love this. Then take a fluffy brush, dip it into your favorite setting powder and lightly dab over the areas you wanna mattify. Once you're done applying the rest of your makeup, repeat that step again. Yes, you can use blotting paper but toilet paper is more absorbent this will give you a flawless space i promise self-care sister out if i had a time machine this is what i would tell my 20 year old self number one do not trust men i know it's unfair to say that all men are bad men but the amount of bad guys that i met in my 20s is terrible i'm not even talking about dating i'm talking about work life don't trust the men that make promises especially the ones they don't keep in fact don't trust anyone who doesn't keep their promises you're going to meet so many people that are going to pretend to care about you but really all they want to do is see what they can get out of you and you're going to learn this lesson five times in your 20s five Five times that I gave people the benefit of the doubt. Which leads me to my next one. Don't forgive people so easily. Because the people that keep hurting you only to apologize, they're gonna do it again. And every time you forgive them, it's only gonna encourage them to repeat their terrible behavior. And also, you're really sweet and kind. But that doesn't mean that you have to help everyone who asks you for help. Because at the end of the day, if you were to ask them for help, are they going to? Are they going to give you the same energy that you gave them? No. And you're going to learn this lesson in your 20s more times than I can count. So stand up for yourself because nobody else is going to do it. And if you don't tell people what you're going through, no one can help you. So stop keeping everything to yourself and ask people for help. What's the worst that can happen? They're going to say no? Well, now you know who has your back and who doesn't. Also remember that just because you have a little bit of money does not mean that you should be spending it. Save your coin, girl. Don't go shopping at Urban Outfitters once a week. Yes, you got cast in a Best Buy commercial that's paying you like $15,000, but don't go spending the money before you even get paid. Be thoughtful. And don't give in to your fears that you can't do something because you're a woman. Instead of taking that Uber, walk. You're gonna be fine, girl. Learn to be comfortable out in public even if you're wearing a short dress. Stop covering your body up because of someone else's insecurity or because you don't want to tempt a guy. Because truthfully, most of the time, they're not even looking at you. Go to the beach and wear that bikini. Stop judging every inch of your body. And for the love of God, unfollow all those fitness girls on Instagram. The Anna Cherie's. Yeah, I'm talking about you. Because you don't realize this now, but they are all editing their pictures. They're all making their asses bigger and their waists smaller. So you become insecure because you're not like them. Oh, and that photo shoot you had with that one famous photographer on Instagram? That photo shoot that you were in lingerie and he asked you, where are your abs? Babe, tell him to 
to F off and leave. You do not have to sit through a photo shoot while the photographer shames you for not having abs. In fact, don't let anybody, and I mean anybody, tell you what your body should look like. You don't need to have a bigger butt, and you don't need to have abs. Just be healthy. And please, 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 whatever you do, don't sit next to Justin at work, because he's going to develop a crush on you and not be able to deal with it when you don't like him back. He's going to get you fired. And once again, because of a man, you are suffering financially and emotionally. Spend more time with your family. Stop running away to LA to follow your dreams. It's weakening your talent and your strength. Instead, go home and recharge. Don't listen to those agents and managers that are telling you you need to be somewhere. No, you don't need to. And start posting that content. You have so many ideas, really good ones, and you like editing, you have a great camera, so just do it. Stop worrying about what your followers are gonna think and be cringe, but be consistent. Just post one video a month. You know you wanna do it, but you're embarrassed. Oh yeah, and download TikTok in 2019 instead of 2020. <laughs> Oh, and give yourself the chance to feel the things you're feeling. Honor what you're feeling because if you don't, you're just shoving everything deep down and one day you're going to explode. <laughs> and finally, ask for what you want. Don't expect people to know what you want. Ask for it. Ask for more money and ask for that support. Your family and your husband are always going to be there. So don't be scared. Soft care sister out. Story time about how my boyfriend is bullying me into losing weight. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. It was sent to me on Instagram. My boyfriend and I have been together for two months. He's a personal trainer, so he's really into fitness. When we started dating, I wasn't super fit, but I definitely was toned. Unfortunately, I got the Rona, so I got fired from my job because I couldn't work for two weeks. I was super sick and I really became depressed. I basically sat on my couch for those two weeks and ate a lot. Before I knew it, I had gained seven pounds. When I finished my quarantine, I finally was able to see my boyfriend. And when he first came into my house to see me, he looked shocked. He looked me up and down and said, did you gain weight? I said, yeah, I probably gained like seven or 10 pounds. And then he asked me how I could let myself go like that. I told him I was totally by myself, cooped up in my apartment and I had nothing else to do but eat. And that's when he said, and I quote, well, we need to get you back into the gym to get you in shape again. Cause I don't want a fat girlfriend. I laughed because I thought for sure he's joking, but then he said, stop laughing, it's not a joke. My stomach sank and I felt like I was gonna poop my pants. I started to cry and he told me that I shouldn't be a baby, that he's allowed to be honest with me about stuff like this because it has to do with him being attracted to me. So in other words, he wasn't attracted to me anymore. That's when he went into my room, picked out a pair of leggings and a sweatshirt, told me to get dressed and took me straight to the gym. He made me exercise for an hour and a half. Instead of getting upset about it, I decided to just take it in stride and go with it. I thought maybe I can get in the best shape of my life now that I have a trainer boyfriend. Friend. As we were working out, he kept commenting on my thighs. He said that they needed to have a gap and that instead of being muscular, I was super soft. Again, I started to cry. Part two is up. Part two of how my boyfriend is bullying me into losing weight. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. It was sent to me on Instagram. After he told me that I was soft at the gym, I started to cry again. I told him that he needed to be more sensitive towards my feelings and that I didn't want to be in a relationship if he was going to be like this toward me. That's when he said that he didn't want to be in a relationship with me because I had gained weight and that's not what he had signed up for. That's when he told me I needed to look around and see all the fit women in the gym and that he could have any of those girls. I was in utter shock. I just couldn't believe that he was talking to me like that and I had never seen that side of him before. The more I cried, the angrier he got. But finally he said, okay, I'm sorry. Let's just do 20 minutes on the Stairmaster. That's when I told him I didn't want to work out anymore. Mind you, he had already had me at the gym for an hour and a half. That's when he said, fine, I'll take you home, but I'm coming back to the gym. The whole way home, he stayed quiet and gave me the cold shoulder while I cried. He pulled up to my house and I got out of the car and he literally sped away as fast as he could. He proceeded to give me the cold shoulder for the next two days. I finally broke and texted him telling him we needed to speak. That's when he said we could talk at the gym. I agreed and he went to pick me up. But the first thing he wanted to do at the gym was put me on a scale and weigh me. I told him absolutely not. Part three is up. Part three of how my boyfriend is bullying me into losing weight. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. It was sent to me on Instagram. He was trying to force me to get on the scale so that he could weigh me because he wanted to see how much weight I could lose in one week. I kept saying no, but then he said fine. Then he handed me a piece of paper and said, here's the diet I want you to follow for the next four weeks. I grabbed the piece of paper and just put it in my purse. Then he has the audacity to get mad at me for not even looking at the diet. He said that I was disrespectful and that I didn't even look at the diet and that it took him hours to write all of that out. And then he said the thing that crushed my heart. He would be embarrassed to take me around his friends and family with the way that I looked. As soon as he said that, I ran out of the gym and walked home. Of course he followed me and told me to get in the car, but I refused. I finally got to my house and he called me. I told him I needed some time away from him and that his behavior was extremely toxic. And that if I didn't have a problem with my weight, neither should he. That's when he said that he was accustomed to only being with girls that were super fit and even had abs. He told me that at first he wasn't convinced if he should date me, but I had a really pretty face. And that he was willing to overlook the fact that I wasn't super fit. He's a total narcissist, but I'm still in love with him. I tried to break up with him, but he said no. And he's still insisting that we just go to the gym together at least. I don't even know how to respond to him. What should I say? Story time about how my father is obsessed with me. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. I'm sending me on Instagram. And trigger warning. My mom and dad had me when they were very, very young. My mom was 14 years old when she got pregnant with me. 
From what my mom told me, my parents were pretty much together throughout the whole pregnancy. Even though they were both in high school, they wanted to move in together and try to raise me like a regular family. But my maternal grandmother had a very big issue with this. She wanted my mom to continue going to high school and possibly even give me up for adoption. But my mom was not having it, so she decided to move out with my dad. Once I was born, unfortunately, my parents just couldn't take care of me. My dad was too busy playing his football and trying to get a scholarship. And my mom just didn't really know how to take care of a child. I mean, she was a child herself. This is when my grandmother stepped in and decided to take me in, which I thank God for every single day of my life. My grandmother raised me as her own daughter and she has been the most amazing woman in my entire life. My parents split up and through most of my childhood, I lived with my mom and my grandmother. I didn't see my dad for about 10 years. By the time I saw him again, I was 15 years old. Part two is a story time about how my father is obsessed with me. Disclaimer is not my story time, it's that I mean on Instagram. And trigger warning. I finally saw my father again when I was 15 years old. From the moment he saw me, he wanted to hug me and kiss me all the time. At first I thought it was normal because he's my father and he hadn't seen me in over 10 years. After a few weeks of him coming to visit me, I started feeling really strange. This was also around the time where I was getting noticed by boys in school. And you know that feeling you get when you know a guy likes you? Well, that's the feeling I started getting from my own father. Every time he touched me, it was like too touchy. And every kiss was just strange. One of the things that really started to bother me was that he liked going to the beach and he wanted to make it a thing. He would always say, let's go to the beach on the weekend, but I didn't feel comfortable with him. First off, he never invited my mom to come or my grandma, so it was always just me and him. He even took me shopping for bikinis, and this is when my stomach dropped. At the bikini shop, he asked for small bikinis, like the type that show a lot of skin. I told him I wasn't comfortable with that. I wanted a bathing suit. He said no and bought me a thong bikini. He stared at me all day at the beach. Part three is up. Story time about how my father is obsessed with me, part three. After he bought me the thong bikini and forced me to wear it at the beach, I noticed he was staring at me. I wrapped myself in a towel and told him I wanted to leave. After that, I told my mom and my grandma how I felt about my dad. They thought that I was exaggerating, but I knew that I wasn't. My mom asked him to never ever do anything like that again and he said he wouldn't. After that, he would always do certain things, like stare at me too much, or always want to hug me and kiss me. And for my own comfort and safety, I put a lot of space between him and I. When I was 18, I finally got my first boyfriend. He became enraged when my mom told him. He told my mom that I was acting like a slut. That's when I cut him out completely from my life. A year later, I got on Instagram and that's when he started following me there. He started leaving strange comments on all my pictures and eventually he started offering me money to spend more time with him. I told him I wasn't comfortable with him. That's when he told me that all he wanted to do was watch me take a bath and that he would pay me thousands if I let him. My grandmother and my mom have completely cut him out of our lives. On the day of my wedding, we hired security to keep him away. And of course, he managed to show up, but security kicked him out. I'm thinking I should get a restraining order. Luckily, my mental health hasn't suffered too much from this. He's obviously an unwell person, but I actually feel really bad for him. And I feel like getting a restraining order is just going to make things worse. What the heck should I do? Bye. My boyfriend went on vacation with his ex behind my back. Should I break up with him? This claim is not my story time. It's on Instagram. Also, I'm just really tired from filming. I'm not sad, I promise. After checking his location and seeing that he was actually in the Bahamas and not Boston where he told me he was going, I started doing some investigating on Instagram. I scanned his Instagram for people that he tagged. And I finally came across his ex's profile. No, I had never done this before just because I didn't care about his ex. Like I said in part one, we never talked about our exes. Fortunately, her account was set to private, so I couldn't see her pictures or stories. But I did see on her bio that she was currently in the Bahamas. From his location, I could see what hotel he was staying at. So I called the hotel and asked for his room number. And they put me through, my boyfriend answered the phone. And the first words out of his mouth were, how did you find me here? I told him I could see his location and that he must have forgotten. That's when he came up with his lie. His boss asked him to go to the Bahamas for emergency business. And that he didn't have time to call me and tell me about it. In the background, I could hear that somebody opened the door and I heard a woman's voice. He instantly hung up on me. So I called his phone, but he wouldn't answer. In fact, he turned his phone off. It wasn't until four days later that he actually showed up to my apartment apologizing. He said his phone broke and that he couldn't get one while he was in the Bahamas. Part three is up. My boyfriend went on vacation with his ex behind my back. Should I break up with him? Disclaimer, this is not my story time. I sent him on Instagram. After four days of not hearing from my stupid boyfriend who was in the Bahamas, finally showed up to my apartment to apologize. I told him not to even bother because I knew that he was with his ex. Then he said, you're right. I'm not even gonna lie to you. Then he came up with this whole story. He clearly had four days to think about it. Told me that his ex-girlfriend's boyfriend died and that she was in need of his help. She asked him to go to the Bahamas to spread her boyfriend's ashes. And of course, being the gentleman that he is, he said, yeah. And that the only reason he 
he didn't tell me was because he didn't want me to get jealous. So I asked him to confirm his story. I told him to call his ex and put her on speaker. And he refused. He said that I was being toxic and that doing that to his poor ex would bring up all the feelings she had from her boyfriend's death. And that she was grieving and I needed to respect her space. Gaslighting much? I told him I wouldn't believe him and then I kicked him out. He told me I was being so insensitive towards him. So I asked his ex on Instagram if the whole story was true. She hasn't opened the message and I'm still waiting for her to reply. It's been a few days since that happened and my boyfriend keeps coming back to my apartment with flowers and champagne. He keeps apologizing and asking me not to break up with him. I know you're all thinking I should just leave him, but I really, really love him. And maybe the story is true. He shouldn't have lied. I can't confirm his story. What should I do? Story time about how I became an IG model slash escort for billionaires. I'll tell you that last month I made $60,000. This clear is not my story time and sending me on Instagram. So at the beginning, I had to lie about my age. I'm really 36 years old, but I say I'm 22. I do look a lot younger than I am, and of course, I get filler and Botox. I started my Instagram account six years ago. My inspirations were Anna Cherie, Amanda Lee, I am Jojo, and Abigail Ratchford. I mean, Abigail Ratchet. <laughs> I basically copied all of these girls' pictures. Within a month of starting my Instagram account, I had 10,000 followers. And yes, all of them were males. But I didn't really start making money until 2018. You know, like every other girl on Instagram, I signed up for OF. And that's when I started making serious money. But I was also making money from Instagram. Brands would send me clothes and watches and protein powders, stuff like that. Eventually, I became an ambassador for one of the biggest Instagram clothing stores. I think we all know what I'm talking about. Fashion Hova. And I started making a lot of money then. So I basically started living above my means. I got myself a new apartment in Beverly Hills. And it was $6,000 a month. I also got myself a Mercedes. And I would exclusively shop at Air One. I would also go shopping at Rodeo Drive almost every day because I wanted the paparazzi to get pictures of me. And I even called the paparazzi on me a few times, so I had to pay them like $2,000 out of pocket. So yeah, I was spending a lot of money. Whatever money I got that month, I would literally spend it by the end. One month, I spent $25,000 going out with friends. I would usually pick up the bill. This is what started getting me into trouble. Part two is, uh... Story time about how I became an IG model slash escort for billionaires. After I spent the $25,000 in one month, I decided I needed another income source. So I thought of escorting. One of my very good friends in LA was also an escort, and she told me about it but i was like i can't do that but one day i called her and she told me everything she gets contacted through instagram by very very rich men like billionaires i honestly didn't believe her at first but then she showed me receipts her bank account had more than a million dollars in it she told me that she had only been doing it for six months she put me in contact with several people and they had to verify a bunch of my stuff. But then after a week, I was finally in. But I was really scared. I had to go get my passport renewed. This meant that I was going to be traveling internationally with men that I didn't know. A few days later, I get a message on Instagram from an account. The guy that owned this account was clearly very rich. It wasn't him contacting me. It was his assistant. I got my information and two days later, I was on a private plane. I landed in a foreign country. And I spent the entire weekend with this guy. He didn't speak English. He basically took me around his city and showed me off for his friends. I honestly didn't feel uncomfortable at any point and he didn't didn't try anything. In fact, he was actually super shy, but his friends on the other hand were really handsy. Part three is up. Part two of how I've been in love with my best friend for six years. This is not my story time of sending me an Instagram. At the party, his girlfriend asked me if I'm in love with him. I actually froze and didn't say anything. Then she got right up in my face and asked me again. I answered no and basically ran away from the party. When I got home, I got a text from Rick asking me if I was okay. I told him I was just tired and I wasn't having fun at the party. Then he sends me a screenshot of messages his girlfriend sent him. In the messages, she told him that she thought I was in love with him and that she could tell just by the way that I looked at him. He told her there was no way and that I was just a sister to him. He actually thought it was hilarious that she would think that. God, if only he knew that it was true. He then told me that he needed to stay away from me just to not make her jealous. This hurt me so much. He was choosing her over me. She actually ended up cheating on him and they broke up. A few years passed by and during that time I dated other people. But I couldn't stop thinking about Rick. Guess what I did? I moved two cities away just to avoid him. Part three is up. My boyfriend went on a vacation with his ex behind my back. Should I break up with him? Disclaimer, I look extremely tired because I had been filming for seven hours. I'm not sad, don't worry. Story time was sending me on Instagram. My boyfriend and I have been together for six months only. Here's the thing, we never bring up our exes, like ever. From my perspective, I thought we had a really healthy relationship. We're both really into fitness, would work out together every single day, and we made time to cook together every single day. He asked me to move in with him two months after we started dating, but I said no. I explained to him that I just wasn't ready for that, and he got really upset. That's when things started changing. He began making up excuses about not being able to hang out with me and sometimes he wouldn't even show up to our gym dates and i guess one of the mistakes that i made was giving him a space a few days later he calls me and tells me that he's in boston for a work trip he didn't even tell me he was going on a trip i just said okay then i tracked his location on my phone and it turns out he's in the bahamas he forgot that i could track his location i started investigating and you'll never guess what i found part two is up 
part three of how I've been in love with my best friend for six years. After I moved away just to try to forget him, it did not work. I just couldn't stop thinking about him. After a year, I moved back to my hometown. I decided I would be honest with Rick and tell him how I really feel about him. Well, it's been a year since I moved home and I still haven't told him anything. Girls fall over themselves just to try to date him. And everyone he's ever dated literally looks like a model. And I know that I can't compete with that. Now, I know I'm not ugly or anything, but I'm definitely not the model type. I decided to open up to Rick's mom and I told her how I felt. She's actually really happy that I told her the truth. And she told me that she always suspected it. She also told me she would love Rick and I to date. I told her that I just didn't have the courage to tell him how I really felt. I mean, imagine you going up to your crush and telling them that you like them. It's so hard. She also told me Rick wants to get married soon and finally settle down. Apparently, he's sick of dating around. So basically, he's looking for a wife. I don't want to sit on the sidelines and watch him with somebody else the rest of my life. I just can't muster up the courage to tell him. Rick and I had dinner a few nights ago, and he told me that he actually likes someone from his job. I almost started crying right then and there in front of him. I'm hoping he doesn't ask her out. I want to find a way to tell him without me dying of embarrassment. If you have any ideas, please let me know. Or maybe I just shouldn't tell him at all. Maybe I can find someone else. What do you think? My fiance does not know that my ex pays for my bills and my student loans. Am I the asshole for not telling him? After my crazy toxic relationship with my ex, he promised he would always help me financially. So in 2020, when I lost my job, I hit him up and he sent me money right away. He sent me 10,000 to start with. I paid bills and some of my student loans off. And three months later, I asked him for another 10 grand. But he actually sent me 30 instead. This held me over for almost a full year. This was right around the time that I met my now fiance. When my fiance and I started dating, of course I was not gonna tell him that my ex was paying for my stuff. He just assumed that I had money saved up. Luckily last year, I did get rehired at my old job, but with a pay cut. When my fiance and I moved in together, I asked him if he could pay most of the rent and he said no. He said he was only able to pay for half of the rent and he literally splits everything. This man even makes me split the cost of toilet paper. I get a Venmo request from him almost every single day every time he buys something. I'm trying not to let it bother me, but at the same time, is he gonna be able to support me when I'm pregnant? I asked him if he would be willing to help me financially. He said no. Part three is up. My fiance doesn't know that my ex is paying for my student loans and my bills. Am I the asshole for not telling him? That's when I asked my fiance if he could help me out financially. This man said no. I was actually shocked. I started to cry and I told him exactly what I thought. First off, he makes me split everything and never invites me out to dinner. Like, never offers to pay for anything. Even if I wanted like a cookie or something at Starbucks, he doesn't pay for that. I have offered to pay for things for him. Sometimes I'll buy dinner for us on the way home and I don't ask him to pay me. I was really close to confessing to him that my ex was paying for a lot of stuff for me. But that's when my fiance told me that he just thinks it's fair for me to pay for my own things. I asked him, what about when I'm pregnant? What if I can't work? He says that I can just pay for my stuff with my own savings. Um, then I asked him if he would be able to pay for all the kids' things. He said no, that I would have to pay for exactly half of the kids' things. And I know what you're thinking. The fact that we didn't have this conversation before we got engaged is crazy. Now I really want to tell him about my ex. And I'm even thinking about getting back with my crazy ex. My fiance is just so blah now to me. Like I can't even look at him the same way anymore. I know I'm not being unreasonable. It's not like I'm asking him to pay for everything. What should I do? Am I the asshole for wanting to expose my lying, cheating mother? A month ago, I borrowed my mom's phone and she had no idea, but I looked at all of her apps and found that she was cheating with multiple men. I'm 26 years old and my parents have now been married for 30 years. I actually got separated when I graduated from high school, but then they got back together a few years later. My mom has always been the one that wants to separate my dad, but he keeps wanting to get back together with her. My dad is actually in love with this woman. He adores her. He does everything for her. He's super affectionate with her, loves to take her out on dates, gives her so much of his time, and she still doesn't appreciate it. I've always been closer to my dad than my mom. My mom's always trying to find an excuse to go party with her friends, but now I know why. But like I said, I ended up borrowing her phone and she probably didn't expect me to go snooping. And honestly, it wasn't even my intention. I'm scrolling on her phone and I see the app Tinder. I nearly fell out of my seat. So I quickly scrolled through everything and started taking pictures. My my mom was sending nudes to random men. Part two is up. Am I the asshole for wanting to expose my lying, cheating mother? That's when I saw that she was sending nudes to men on different apps. Not only was she on Tinder, she was also on Bumble and an app for older people. I do, my father is still in love with this woman. I managed to take pictures of everything on the apps. Here's the worst part. Start going through her messages and that's when I found that she has a boyfriend. At that point, I didn't know how long they'd been together. Now I know that she's been with him for six months. So every single time she goes on her weekend trips with her friends, she's actually with her boyfriend. And get this, she uses my dad's money to pay for everything. An entire week passed before I confronted her. First, I didn't know how to confront her, but I had to just do it. Every time I saw my dad, I would start to cry and he was worried about me. I didn't have the heart to tell my dad until I confronted my mom. I went up to her and I showed her all the receipts I had. Then she got pissed at me for looking through her phone. By the way, at this point, I'm still living with my parents. That's when she threatened to kick me out of the house if I told my dad anything. My own mother threatening me. Then she tried to smack me across the face, so I smacked her. Part three is up.
Am I the asshole for wanting to expose my lying, cheating mother? After she slapped me, I slapped her back. And I slapped her so hard, she actually fell on the floor. I instantly felt bad and tried to apologize. That's when she started to cry, and I started to cry. I asked her to just be honest with me and tell me the truth. She told me that she wasn't in love with my dad anymore, but that she felt bad for him because he was still in love with her. And that she'd been dating this new guy for six months. She even confessed that she was addicted to going on dating apps and flirting with men. That's when I told her she needed to tell my dad. That she needed to stop using his money to take her boyfriend out. Then another confession. She had spent over $25,000 dollars on hotels that she would book for her and her new boyfriend and apparently this guy was broke he couldn't pay for himself she tried to negotiate with me if i don't tell my dad she'd break up with her boyfriend and stop using the apps i mean she's my mother and i don't want to cause her pain but it's my dad I ended up telling her that i wouldn't tell my dad but two nights ago my dad went on a work trip my mom is so stupid she actually snuck in her boyfriend through her window i heard them doing the dirty all night and now she's begging me again not to tell my dad i'm planning on telling my dad tonight i'll have to keep you guys updated give me advice